In this video, we're going to understand what is Pakistan's situation right now. It's been a long time that I've updated you on our Western neighbor. And right now, when the whole world is busy in Eastern Europe, I thought one should also keep themselves up to date regarding our Western neighbor. The first thing that you have to understand is that Pakistan's economic condition is pathetic. They are right now sitting on $20 billion current account deficit. Current account deficit means when a country imports more than it exports. So naturally, if you import something more and you don't have anything to sell, then your currency will keep going out. $20 billion is not at all a small amount. It is as much as 6% of Pakistan's GDP. If the current account deficit increases, then it gets difficult for a country to import anything. Because their currency will depreciate and you will not be able to buy anything from other country. And if you remember, Pakistan always used to boast about CPEC, China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. In fact, it was this project that became the starting point of Pakistan's romance with China since 2015. And not just Pakistan, it is still a strategic project for China. Because through this project, China's aim is to expand its influence in Pakistan and across Central and South Asia. You can think of it as an alternative land route instead of the default Indian Ocean route. This land route can become China's option for countering the influence of India and United States at the Indo-Pacific region. CPEC also links Pakistan's Gawadar seaport in Balochistan on the Arabian Sea to China's western Xinjiang region and it passes through POK region that is Pakistan occupied Kashmir. So basically China has halted this project as of now. Nothing is happening here. And at the Gawadar region, if you remember in November 2021, there was a civil unrest in Gwadar, Balochistan, where the local population were against the Chinese investment and criticizing the present Pakistan's government. If you know, China has spent billions of dollars on building the Gwadar seaport town. But then it soon became clear to the local Balochi people that Gwadar's development is not meant to improve their economic condition. Instead, it is going to wipe them out from the scene as well as cripple them economically. So you have to understand that CPEC project as of now has been completely halted and Pakistan's hope of earning from this project is still a long distance dream. And then you also know Pakistan has been diplomatically isolated in the United Nation because of its closeness and alignment with China and for also hosting many terror outfits which are nothing but Pakistan's own creation. I don't know whether you know this or not, Taliban was actually the creation of Pakistan. United States also has a role in it but it is the brainchild of Pakistan's ISIN establishment. If you want to know more about it, I have a video on why United States left Afghanistan. In that, I've explained how Pakistan created Taliban and became a war broker. And today, Pakistan is being bitten by their own snakes. So basically, even United States is not interested in Pakistan anymore. Although if you see during the 80s and 90s, United States used to use Pakistan against Soviet intervention in Afghanistan, as well as against India. But right now in 2022, Pakistan is of no use to United States. And this is pretty evident when United States transferred the power of Afghanistan in the hands of Taliban regime. If United States wanted, they could have given the control to Pakistan. But that did not happen. What we hear today is that Taliban is attacking the Pakistani army every now and then. I believe the last attack took place on February 6, 2022, where five Pakistani soldiers were killed. So, even Taliban is not letting Pakistan breathe easily. And then you all know that Pakistan is also in the grey list of FATF. The next session of FATF will take place in April 2022. All eyes are on whether Pakistan will be blacklisted for promoting terrorism or will still remain in the grey list as before. So basically Pakistan is in grey list because of money laundering and terror financing. The FATF currently comprises of 37 member countries. Even India is one of them. Plus, it is no more a hidden matter. India has actively played a role in pushing Pakistan in the grey list for funding terrorism in Jammu and Kashmir. Now that Pakistan is in grey list since 2018, it gets extremely difficult for Pakistan to get any kind of financial aid from IMF, World Bank, Asian Development Bank and the European Union. And the reason Pakistan right now is not in the blacklist is because of China. So on one hand, Pakistan is not getting any loan or aid from IMF, World Bank, Asian Development Bank and the European Union. And on the other hand, China because of whom Pakistan should be thankful that they are not in the blacklist, even China is not giving any money nor it is investing in CPEC project. And all of this is Pakistan's fault. You will hear Pakistani people defending their government's stupidity in the comment section. But the fact is, their generals and bureaucrats have been eating the public money, sending their children to Europe and America, 
all their generals and bureaucrats have big houses in Europe and America. Ultimately, the national debt will be socialized among the Pakistani public. In the name of religion, your own people have deceived you. And this even China is aware of it. That is the sole reason China has halted the CPEC project. Here is the total external debt of Pakistan. It is around $112 billion. External debt is the portion of a country's debt that is borrowed from foreign lenders through commercial banks, governments or international financial institutions. If a country cannot repay its external debt, it faces a debt crisis. If a nation fails to repay its external debt, it is said to be in sovereign default. That means, ye kars mein doob gaye hain, ye paisa nahi lota paayenge. They will not be in a position to return money. Apart from external debts, there are internal debts too, which is the government's obligation to domestic lenders. Although I don't have any separate data regarding Pakistan's internal debt, but here is a graph that shows Pakistan's overall national debt. As of 2022, it is around $246 billion. A country's overall national debt includes both internal as well as external debt. I've already shown you Pakistan's external debt, which is around $112 billion. To find internal debt, just subtract. That means the total national debt of Pakistan as of now is around 84% of its GDP. I want you to imagine how much Pakistan is neck deep in debt. I have no idea how they are going to repay or whether they will even repay it or not. Even that is a big question. So I want you to understand the situation. If a country doesn't have money, unfortunately in this world, no one will support them. No one will listen to them. And their existence is also not even anyone's concern. And who's to be blamed for all of this? It is just Pakistan and Pakistan only. China has refused to help Pakistan because Chinese know if they give more money, they will not be able to return it. And as it is, you don't get loan without keeping any collateral, right? Similarly, even the Pakistani government has kept many public assets as collateral for getting loans from China. So until unless Pakistan clears old loan, they will not get any new loan. As simple as that. Even United States is not going to give any aid to Pakistan. And again, I don't know whether you know this or not, since 1947, Pakistan has been living on the aid given by United States. The US has been the largest contributor of financial aid to Pakistan since 1947. Between 1951 and 2017, Pakistan has received somewhere around 60 to 70 billion dollar money in aid. There is a difference between aid and loan. China gives loan. Unfortunately, loan has to be given back. The United States gave aid. Now don't consider aid as a charity. There is a reason behind United States aid to Pakistan. Pakistan enjoyed it and never used its own brains. So both United States and Pakistan have benefited. Why do you think many Pakistani generals have homes in United States? How did they get United States passport? It is obvious, right? The CIA must have had some deal with them. But anyhow, after Trump became president, the US aid to Pakistan declined. And after the whole Afghanistan wind up, Pakistan stopped receiving aid from United States. So anyhow, the point is, even United States is not giving money to Pakistan. When two big countries like United States and China is not giving money to Pakistan, or you can say Pakistan is of no use to US and China, presently when Russia-Ukraine war is going on, Pakistan has openly extended support to Russia. Russia, with whom Pakistan has limited engagement in terms of trade or economic support, right now Pakistan is the only country that has openly showed support to Russia. And the reason is again simple. Pakistan needs money. At first, Pakistan abstained from voting. But later on, Pakistan saw it as an opportunity. You can also call it a desperate move for acquiring financial aid. If you remember, last year in July 2021, Pakistan and Russia had signed an agreement for the construction of a gas pipeline from Karachi to Lahore. As per the agreement of this construction, the Pakistani side will maintain majority shareholding. I am assuming Pakistan's Prime Minister Imran Khan when he visited Moscow, he must have spoken to the Russians regarding some advance money for paying immediate bills. But anyhow, inside Pakistan, the opinion is divided. One side believes that Pakistan will be punished by the Western Bloc for visiting Russia. And then there is the other side who thinks that Pakistan has now started conducting mature diplomacy. Personally, the second reason is beyond my comprehension. I don't believe that. And if you see, the United States has already started punishing Pakistan with the recent penalty imposed by the US Federal Reserve on Pakistan's National Bank with $20.4 million for anti-money laundering violation. And then I have also told you that FATF's next session will be in April 2022. All eyes will be on Pakistan whether it is going to go into the blacklist or still remain in grey list of FATF. 
Now looking at the present scenario, I don't think that the future looks bright for Pakistan. The Western bloc will definitely push Pakistan into the blacklist category. But that is the future talk. Whether it will happen or not, only time will tell. However, presently it is clear that Pakistan is no longer of any importance or any critical value to United States or the Western bloc. And if you need more evidence of that, then look at this. When Imran Khan was visiting Russia, on the other hand, General Bajwa went to Belgium to meet Joseph Borrell, who is the High Representative of the European Union on Foreign Affairs and Security Policy. Although he did not get an appointment with him, instead he met Secretary General of European External Action Services and Chairman of the European Union Military Committee. And if you read the transcription of the visit, it was all one-sided talk from Pakistan's Chief of Army Staff, which I think the European Union representatives also did not entertain him. Personally, I believe this visit by the Pakistani Chief of Army Staff must be a routine duty of giving information to the European Union military. After all, General Bajwa has relatives in Europe. The world is not so simple that you can keep your relatives in one country and go around doing anything you want. There is a cost associated with everything. And on that line, I am saying that this must be a routine duty of General Bajwa to visit his masters. So anyhow, United States is not helping. China is not helping. Russia is currently busy, so don't expect that Russia has time to focus on Pakistan to give anything in return. Plus think about it. I know the whole European Union has put a sanction on Russian energy sector. So if at all you are thinking that to sustain the Russian economy, Russia will depend on Pakistan or any such country that can continue buying oil and gas from them, then that is also not a good argument. Of course, Russia would need customers after the war is over. But depending on Pakistan, which is already sitting on a huge pile of debt, cannot be a strong reason for Russia to return any favor. I am sure Russian president liked the fact that during this crisis, someone has come to Russia to visit him, had tea and asked him how is he doing. All of that is appreciated from Russian side. But to have any other hopes, and that too in this war situation, would be a complete misunderstanding from Pakistan's side. So overall, if you see, Pakistan is not getting money in the form of loan or aid from anyone. Even Saudi Arabia is fed up of Pakistan. Now that everyone is occupied with Russia-Ukraine war, there is also another conflict going on between Yemen and Saudi Arabia. The population of Yemen has two principal Islamic groups. 65% is Sunni and 35% is Shia. The Houthi movement, backed by Iran, is an active armed movement comprising of Shia rebels fighting against the Saudi forces in northern Yemen. Although this war between Saudi Arabia and Yemen is going on since 2014, Last year in September 2021, if you remember, United States had removed its most advanced military defense system, that is the Patriot, from Saudi Arabia. Since then, the Houthis have been actively attacking Saudi forces. Plus, Saudi Arabia is also aware of the fact that IRGC, which is a branch of the Iranian armed forces, they recruit Pakistani Shia men for their brigade. And even the Pakistani ISI know about this. And Saudi Arabia also knows that the Pakistani intelligence know this. That is why Saudi Arabia is not happy with Pakistan. And then Pakistan also has its own issues with Iran. Pakistan accuses Iran for helping the Baloch separatist militants in launching attacks against Pakistani state. Iran actually has substantial control over the Balochistan that it can destabilize the region. After the United States withdrawal from Saudi Arabia, Saudi Arabia's security situation has become weak. Surprisingly, these Houthis, who are Iran's proxy forces, have built their own drone industry in Yemen. Last year in 2020, the Houthis have conducted 375 cross-border attacks in Saudi Arabia, including missile and drone attacks. Obviously, Iran is supporting and helping these Houthis in Yemen. And on the other hand, Saudi Arabia desperately wants to stop Houthis missile flying into Saudi airspace because now Houthi targets are becoming more and more strategic. They are targeting oil refineries, airports and shipping ports. And Saudi Arabia wants to desperately put a stop on the recruitment of Iran's proxy forces. Saudi Arabia knows that Iran recruits Shia men from Pakistan, Iraq, Afghanistan and Syria. And if they have to enter Yemen, they cannot come all the way from this side. They take the sea route and enter Yemen. So anyhow, Saudi Arabia knows that Pakistan's Shia men are being recruited by the Iranians. Iran has maintained its leverage on Balochistan for keeping Pakistan in control. Pakistan has been losing a lot of soldiers in Balochistan. If at all Pakistan sends its forces to Saudi Arabia to fight against the Houthis, Iran will not sit quiet. So if you look at it this way, then you will realize that Pakistan has to appease Saudi Arabia and at the same time it also has to keep a distance from Saudi Arabia and Yemen's fight. Similarly, there is a pressure from the opposite side on Pakistan as well. 
And in the end, if you look at Pakistan's currency, it is dropping continuously against US dollar. Currently, one dollar is around 178 Pakistani rupees. Pakistan's national debt is all-time high. Energy and oil prices across the world due to Russia-Ukraine war is increasing day by day. And then the value of Pakistani rupee is continuously dropping against the US dollar. So if you see, this is not at all a good situation for any country to be in. But in this case, everyone in the world seems to understand it, apart from the Pakistanis. So this is what is going on with Pakistan. I hope you found this video informative. Thank you for watching it.